Jennifer, we are expecting some major fireworks tonight surrounding the appointment of Carl Givens as Bastrop's police chief just three weeks ago. Now today, KNOE obtained these memos from Bastrop City Attorney Ricky Smith casting doubt on whether Givens is legally in his current position. Police Chief Givens was suspended by the Civil Service Board for 30 days for liking Facebook posts originating from Mayor Olive's campaign Facebook. We will be inside the Bastrop City Council meeting tonight and we'll have more updates for you at 10. Live in Bastrop, Tyler Englander, KNOE 8 News. Good evening, Jennifer. It's a little bit difficult to see in the dark, but I want you to take a look at those three white squares. For most of West Monroe's history, those were actually bank teller windows. One woman is trying to bring back the look. AJ, excited for that one over at Carroll, but we've got a big matchup here at Oak Grove. After starting the season 0-3, the Tigers are looking to make it five in a row tonight against Cedar Creek. During their four-game win streak, Oak Grove is outscoring their opponents 187 to 22. Meanwhile, three and three Cedar Creek, they're coming off a heartbreaking two-point loss to Jonesboro Hodge. Jasmine, Senator Katrina Jackson told me being a member of this committee is extremely important to her. She says people in Northeast Louisiana have a right to feel safe when they interact with law enforcement. State Senator Katrina Jackson represents several Northeast Louisiana parishes. She says the in-custody death of Ronald Green in Union Parish and the beating of Aaron Bowman in Monroe led the Senate to take action. And even if you're arrested, you should show up at that, at that precinct uh, the way that they found you, right, without being brutally beat or killed. The committee is tasked with making recommendations on how to improve state police. And what policies do we put in place to ensure that when I talk to mothers of minority males and females that I can say, look, we have a good state police force. Top of mind for Senator Jackson is ending qualified immunity, which shields officers from being held civilly responsible, even if they break the law. I think one of the best deterrents is, is the criminal justice system, but also to hold someone personally liable like you are our held personal liable when we negligently, even negligently inflict harm on someone. Uh, but intentional infliction of harm on someone, sh you should be held personally liable. After multiple allegations of state police cover-ups, Jackson wants the committee to take a look at how use of force incidents are investigated. How does it go from Troop F to this troop to that troop and go up to the top and is hidden for a year or two? In 2019, Aaron Bowman of Monroe was hit by Trooper Jacob Brown 18 times in the head with a flashlight. His attorney, Denicia Banks-Miley, is thankful the Senate is taking reform seriously. What that will tell the state police and every other um, agency is that someone else is watching you, so do the right thing. The committee is expected to hold its first meeting in December. They hope to have a full report sent to the Senate by October of next year. Jasmine. Jennifer, this indictment out of the Western District of Louisiana charges Brown with a single count of deprivation of rights under color of law. If convicted, Brown faces a maximum of 10 years in prison. Aaron Bowman's attorney says this is just the first step toward justice. In May of 2019, the sounds of pain and fear rippled across the Monroe neighborhood as Aaron Bowman was beaten by Louisiana State Trooper Jacob Brown. <laughs> Nearly two years later for Bowman, the only emotion heard was one of happiness. As soon as I called him and I informed him of, of what happened with Jacob Brown, he cried and cried tears of joy. There was an outburst of crying on the telephone um, at that time because he said, finally, finally, I believe that I will truly see justice. Finally. Body camera footage shows Brown striking Bowman with a flashlight 18 times in approximately 24 seconds. Now, Brown faces a federal indictment. We're late in the game. It's been two years, but it's never too late for justice. So for that, we are grateful to have this result. 
Bank Smiley says none of this would have been possible without the help of a whistleblower employed by LSP. I know Aaron expresses daily his gratitude for him because he obviously did not have to do that, but he believed in justice so much that he was willing to put everything on the line for Aaron. Bank Smiley wants to caution that today's step in the right direction is only that, a step. It's not a conviction, and she's still waiting for other officers to be charged. That was probably my first question that I asked um, the investigators um, when FBI gave me that initial call was that, hey, I'm grateful for this, but what are we doing moving forward? What about the other officers and those who covered it up and those who did nothing? Bank Smiley says the fight is about more than Aaron Bowman. It's about ending police brutality. And that is why we are going to continue to push our way through this. We're going to continue to fight so that the structural issues, um, as such that was going on with LSP LSP and other um, police agencies, stops. Brown is also involved in at least two other excessive use of force incidents. We're waiting to see if the federal government will issue indictments in those cases. Jennifer? It's been nearly eight months since Julia Letlow lost her husband to COVID. She says the empty chair at the dinner table is a constant reminder of just how cruel this virus can be. You know, Luke's mission was always helping other people. I think that would be a beautiful legacy if he, if his um, story saves one life, um, then me telling it is absolutely worth it. It started with a conversation. Congressman-elect Luke Letlow looked at his wife and said he thought he was running a temperature. What ensued in the weeks ahead became a nightmare. As a wife and as um, someone who you love your partner very deeply, it was uh, horrific to uh, to watch Luke suffer and uh, watch him struggle to breathe and uh, watch as um, the life drained from him um, every second of every day. Luke spent Christmas in the intensive care unit. He hoped to warn people of the dangers of COVID. Uh, You know, while Luke was in the hospitals, we were just talking about, um, he felt so uh, passionate about warning other people about how serious this virus was that he actually wanted to hold a press conference in his hospital room once he got better. Luke never got the chance to warn people. Luke, a 41-year-old with no pre-existing conditions, succumbed to what his wife called the silent killer just weeks before life-saving vaccines were made available. He was so excited to receive that vaccine. Um, I know he would have received it uh, just as I did. Julia and Luke would pray together for a vaccine before he got sick. She's hoping now that it's widely available, people will get vaccinated in Luke's memory. And now that we have this amazing, miraculous uh, remedy that scientists have worked 24 seven at warp speed for us to be able to have, um, it's just such an awesome um, option that we have available to combat uh, this silent killer. Letlow's two kids, Jacqueline and Jeremiah, are forced to grow up without their father. She hopes sharing her story will ensure that no family has to go through the same heartbreaking reality. One of the um, one of the things I've read is that, oh, this doesn't really affect children. And my answer to that is, yes, it does. Uh, Children can uh, get ill from from COVID. But um, I would want you to think about the one point one million children across the globe that um, are staring at that empty seat tonight when they um, go to dinner. Letlow also told me she'll introduce legislation to ensure tragic stories like her husband will be remembered in the Library of Congress. Jennifer? Now, the reason I ask who's going to make up that unit is because it has been alleged that there was a cover-up within the state police. How can you guarantee if they're if that unit is made up of people employed by state police, that they're not going to protect their fellow officers, that they're going to get to the truth. I wasn't here at that time when the alleged cover-up took place. We're not confident that we're exactly where we need to be. Otherwise, we wouldn't be bringing in 
uh, this entity to, to, to do this study. If someone were to be pulled over tonight, do you have complete faith that they're going to be treated properly? Yeah, I mean, I have faith in that. Now, obviously, you, you do until you're, you're disappointed, right? Representative-elect for District 16, how does that sound? You talked about District 16 having not just an impact on the state of Louisiana, not just on the country, but globally. How can you help make that happen?